After the fall of the Soviet Union, the world expected the United Nations to become a force to promote democracy and human rights. But in the new world order, another Cold War is emerging, where China's clout at the multilateral forums under the UN system has become stronger. A new report by the UK Parliament's Foreign Affairs Committee said that China is trying to seize the control of multilateral organizations so they could be weaponized for its own advantage. Here are some of the key multilateral bodies China dominates. International Telecommunications Union United Nations Industrial Development Organization International Civil Aviation Organization International Maritime Organization World Health Organization China is aggressively pushing its agenda. Uh, it's not unusual for states to push their agenda because that's what all states do in multilateral fora. But what is different from other states is that China is using every lever it has beyond the multilateral stage to push its agenda and push its position on the multilateral stage too. So what they are doing is leveraging their bilateral ties uh, and using those ties which they may have for economic linkages, uh, development cooperation, etc. and using that on global platforms. This is a rather different approach. It's like a, a full court press in basketball that you're using every leverage to gain uh, a position of prominence on multilateral platforms. In fact, China now heads four out of 15 specialized UN bodies, while no other nation leads more than one. Along with aggressive diplomacy, China also uses its money power to get leverage at multilateral forums. The US contribution to the UN rose by a little over 200% between 2010 and 2019 to 11 billion US dollar. In the same duration, China's contribution rose from 190 million US dollar to 1.6 billion US dollar, a rise of 346%. By contrast, India's contribution rose by nearly 150% from 89 million US dollar to 132 million US dollar. China grabbed the opportunity when the US created a vacuum. In 1990s, uh, the Chinese contribution to the UN budget was say about three and a half percent. Today, the Chinese contribution is around 10 percent. So obviously, uh, there is a fundamental shift in the financial contributions. And when countries are paying more, they also want and demand more. I think that, uh, uh, you know, the US has been the largest contributor by far uh, to multilateral organizations than countries like Europe, Japan, China, and so on. China's contributions have been increasing but China's influence in these organizations has been helped by the very short-sighted U.S. policy of pulling out of international organizations. Growing influence of China in UN bodies could have far-reaching consequences. It gives China the strength to stifle international scrutiny of its behavior at home and abroad. On numerous maritime and border disputes, China can use its clout and get the decision it wants. China believes in expansionist policy. China does not believe in respecting United Nations laws. Look at what China is trying to do in South China Sea. So a, a country which believes does not respect international laws, which respects no territorial integrity of no country, which has border problem with 14 countries. And I'm amazed that out of 14 countries, certain countries don't even touch the border of China. <laughs> this is amazing. China's 
doesn't even touch the border of those one few countries of after that 14 group and china claims border problem with those country so therefore this country needs to be sorted out i am using a strong word this need country needs china and pakistan need to be sorted out and the only way they can be sorted out is i am telling you the best weapon is the sunzu in art of warfare he writes the art of warfare lies in defeating enemy without fighting and i think that sunzu was their own chap own individual strategic thinker of china and i think he is very right and therefore we should use this thought this strategy defeat the enemy without fighting now how do you defeat hit china economically the challenge posed by china is now clear to the us as well and of late washington has attempted to counter china's influence on the un depends on how the rest of the world actually interacts with the international organizations for instance in the un security council uh, other countries have a veto so if something china is doing or wants to do is not to their liking for instance it wanted to have discussions on kashmir in the security council which uh, france and us uh, actually vetoed so uh, you know there are countries which will veto uh, china can't have unilateral influence china is a emergent power it is a rising power it's a, a major uh, power that said uh, many other countries are also emerging are also rising and have the capacity to work together to address these challenges um and multilateral bodies by definition work on uh trying to balance out these power differentials for example uh in um uh, uh, uh multilateral organizations such as say the who such as uh, iaea uh, these are very technical bodies and much of the decision making is based on technical inputs so our differential does not automatically translate into a differential in terms of uh, uh, setting the agenda changing the agenda so today china's ability is that it is able to block an agenda which is not conducive to it but it has not been able to promote an agenda which is conducive to it so there are differences india and china share a long and disputed border with relations having considerably strained after the galwan valley clash on june 15th 2020 china's increasing hold on multi forum bodies is a cause of worry for india too and it needs to become more proactive apart from voluntary contributions and eyeing for key positions experts believe that india needs to work with other countries and go beyond conventional foreign policy what could act in india's favor is its ability to work with other countries while china lacks a collaborative approach a toi online report